Welcome to our review on electron microscopy. So the first thing we actually need to understand here is the definition of a key term to do with microscopes, and that's the term resolution. So when we're talking about the resolution of a microscope, we're referring to the smallest distance between two points that can be seen as separate entities. Now, what we find is if we think about our light microscope from previously, any structures smaller than 0.2 micrometers can't be seen with the light microscope. So the electron microscope then is different to the light microscope in the fact that as opposed to using light, as the name suggests, it uses a beam of electrons. Now you don't have to know all the ins and outs of how it works, which is always nice, but you do need to know that there are two types of electron microscope. So the first one is what's called a transmission electron microscope or TEM. And this produces the most magnified images. So this is the real up close image. Second type is the scanning electron microscope or SEM. And this one has the unique feature of being able to produce three dimensional images of the surface. So the picture at the bottom there on the left hand side is a TEM image. And on the right hand side, that's a scanning electron microscope image, as you can see from 3D nature of it. So one of the key questions they could ask you about here is to compare the electron microscope with the light microscope. So when we're actually coming on to this comparison, the first thing we need to remember is that if we're thinking about cost, then the light microscope is so much cheaper than the electron microscope. Light microscopes we've got in school, electron microscopes, really unlikely for you to have one of those in school. So the cost is the key problem there. If we think about the size and portability, the light microscope is small and portable, so you can take it out into the field and use it in the middle of a rainforest. And the electron microscope, not so much. This thing is pretty big, okay? So it's not a portable item. If we think about the resolution, then what we find is our light microscope resolution only goes up to 0.2 micrometers. Whereas if we compare that to the electron microscope, that one has a resolution of 0.1 nanometers. So I've given you the actual sizes in standard form in meters there, just so you can compare. So two times 10 to the minus seven compared to one times 10 to the minus 10, a significant difference. If we're thinking about the actual specimens themselves, then in a light microscope, they can either be living or dead. Whereas the electron microscope, the specimens have to be dead because it's got to be in a vacuum, which means there's no particles present. Otherwise, it will not work. The preparation of samples for our light microscope, very simple, whereas way more complex for the electron microscope there. When we think about the final image you're going to see, then our light microscope will have the natural color of the sample, unless, of course, we've applied a stain to it. Whereas in the electron microscope, it's black and white images that we would produce. And generally speaking, people add false color to it later just to reveal certain structures more clearly. So one of those math skills you need to be able to use on your new GCSE science papers is all about standard form. So because when we're talking about images to do with microscopes there, we talk about very tiny things, then we use standard form. So what you're going to do is always write it as your decimal number times by 10 to the power n meters. So you'd have say 4.6 times 10 to the power 6 meters. Do remember that that power could either be positive or negative. Now, if we've got a negative power, then that tells us that the number is less than one. So it's something much smaller. So when we're talking about microscopes, then it will always be a minus figure that goes there. Whereas if we've got a positive power, then the number is more than one. And we'll see that in other areas of science as we go through the GCSE course. Now, hopefully your math teachers have taught you all about this, but just in case, there's a couple of simple rules that you can use to actually work with standard form. So the first one is if you're multiplying numbers in standard form, then you're going to add their powers. So if you had two values that were 10 to the power of three, then 10 to the power of three times 10 to the power of three would be 10 to the power of six. We've just added the two threes. If, however, we're dividing numbers in standard form, then you're going to subtract the power of 10 in the denominator. So that's the one below your line, the one that you're dividing by from the power of 10 in your numerator or the one above the line or the one that's being divided. So if we had 
10 to the power 2 divided by 10 to the power 4, then it would be to the power minus 2 because it's going to be 2 minus 4. So just make sure you know those quick ways to double check whether you've actually got your correct standard form because with calculators it's so easy to make a mistake. So if you learn those couple of bits then you should be well on the way to be able to at least check your answer is correct in the exam. So the last thing we really need to think about here is what's actually the benefit of using these electron microscopes? Why do we use these things that are more expensive and harder to move around instead of just using a light microscope? And there are three key bits that we should remember here. First of all, we can see more detail. So it's only through the use of electron microscopes that we've actually had a greater understanding of what's in cells. It's revealed a greater level of information on what subcellular structures there are and the actual structure of those structures. And it's also helped us to understand the structure of viruses, which are incredibly small in most cases. And it's then allowed us to develop drugs as a result of our understanding of their structure. So it's only when you understand what the virus actually looks like that you can then target specific drugs to deal with them.